In this video I'm going to complete the most technically demanding part of the derivation of a path integral a representation uh, for the propagator that was introduced uh, in the previous segment. And here again I show uh, the um, uh, expression for this propagator that we derived. So um, in, in the following I'm going to be doing my calculations mostly in one dimension uh, for the sake of simplicity. There is no real reason to go to one dimension, so the calculation sort of goes the same way in two dimensions or three dimensions or 100 dimensions. It's just uh, going to one dimension it just simplifies uh, notations a little bit. We don't have to deal with vector indices. And uh, also uh, it will allow me to illustrate certain steps of our derivation in a sort of intuitive pictorial way. So a second comment I would like to make is that what we call uh, the propagator also appears in the literature under the name of uh, transition amplitude, well, from an initial point xi to a final point xf in this case. And a very um, closely related uh, uh, object is also called the green function. So uh, if you see these uh, uh, expressions in the literature, they may be actually very much related to one another and all refer to this object essentially. Now, the main difficulty in uh, calculating this object, uh, once again, is the presence of this evolution operator, which is an exponential uh, of uh, uh, Hamiltonian. And to calculate this exponential of an operator is a very tricky business. So uh, basically the goal of the uh, remaining calculation, as we discussed, is going to be to simplify this uh, expression so that it doesn't really contain any operators. And we deal with sort of regular mathematical quantities, not operators. And in doing this simplification, uh, we're going to rely on two uh, very useful uh, mathematical or physical, actually, in this case, two uh, formulas. So one of them, the first one listed here, we already have actually discussed um, in uh, 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 the second lecture last week. So this is the so-called uh, resolution of the identity operator. And the fact that it is uh, the identity operator uh, means uh, that... Um, so let's say if we have an arbitrary wave function psi and we act by this operator on this wave function psi on this psi, so what we're going to get is the following x psi, this matrix elements times the uh, uh, ket vector x dx and this is identically equal to the psi itself so uh, this is uh, 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 formula number one. Another equation uh, which is going to be very useful, actually it's a property of the evolution operator, actually relies on a very simple observation. So the evolution operator itself translates uh, the wave function from uh, the initial moment of time, so this is time and this is let's say time equals zero, so to the wave function psi of t at time at the final moment of time t equals t. Well, so, uh, but instead of going directly from 0 to t, we can uh, do uh, that in sort of two steps. We first can go to, let's say, certain t1, which is uh, between 0 and t, and then go from t1 to t. So, uh, and, uh, you know, going from t1 to t corresponds here in the language of this evolution operator is applying this operator with, uh, 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 which depends on t minus t1 to the wave function that we have here in the middle. So on the other hand, the wave function in the middle, this psi of t1, itself can be represented as the action of the evolution operator u of t1 on the original wave function psi of 0. So therefore, what we derive here is that uh, the um, evolution operator u of t can be written as the product of two evolution operators u of t minus t1 times uh, u of t1. Now, uh, so the particularly simple way of splitting uh, the uh, time interval into uh, two, let's in this case, is just uh, dividing it in half. So let's say again, so we have this time axis, so zero uh, t, and we just divide it uh, into two pieces. So from zero to t2 and from t2 uh, to t. And so therefore we have the expression for the evolution operator u of t is equal to u of t over two times u of t over two. So uh, now, if we're going to use the, um, um, well, if we're going to if we're going to uh, focus on the actual propagator, which is the matrix element of this evolution operator between the initial uh, point x i and the final point x f, what we can do, we can well, we can write it as x f u of t over two, u of t over two, x i, 
and insert here the resolution of, ident of the identity that we discussed in the previous slide. So and if we do so, we get to this expression, which uh, uh, essentially splits the original uh, propagator into two propagators. One goes from xi to x, and the other goes from point x to uh, the final point x sub f. This splitting of the original propagator into two allows a very useful and intuitive uh, illustration that I'm going to present now, uh, which will actually bring us closer to the notion of uh, path integral. So let's say this is my coordinate x, and this is time t, so uh, and this is my zero and final time t. This is going to be my xi and xf. And so what I'm interested in is uh, calculating the propagator of going from the initial moment of time xi to this xf at t equals t. So this is essentially what I'm calculating. And this sort of solid line connecting the two points um, sort of corresponds to my g of xi xf t. Now, this equation uh, tells me that I can uh, take, well, a point in the middle, so this is going to be my t over 2, and what I have to do in order to calculate this propagator, I have to consider all possible coordinates in between, so let's say I will go from xi to x, and from x to xf, this is going to be one path, another path is going to be to go to a different x, like so, etc., etc., so these solid lines are going to be uh, sort of representing, you know, the first and the second propagator in this integral. And, um, well, obviously, uh, this uh, procedure of splitting uh, or the original time interval and uh, position interval into uh, two can be continued. So what I can do, I can keep on truncating my, uh, my time interval into smaller and smaller pieces, and uh, when, I'm, when I will continue doing so, I will have more and more intermediate coordinates that are going to uh, appear, and therefore I will generate all possible trajectories that are going to cover the entire space here. And this is how path integral or integral over trajectories really appears. But at, this, at the level of this illustration, this path integral, this picture is not very useful for sort of practical purposes. Uh, to make some progress here, so let me sort of formalize what I just said, and what I said is simply the fact that let me just split, instead of splitting my uh, time interval into two pieces, let, it, let, split, let me split it into n pieces. And so n, n here is going to be very, very large, so that t over n, the, each uh, individual time interval, is extremely small. And so each of these small uh, time intervals, the evolution operator on each of these small time intervals corresponds to this exponential e to the power i over h bar h t over n. So this t, t over n I can make as small as I want. So and if I make it really, really small, so instead of writing the full Taylor series for this exponential, I can write it as uh, simply two terms, one minus the first linear term. And just I truncate my series right here and uh, uh, so basically approximate my evolution operator in each of these uh, uh, time intervals uh, as, uh, uh, as so. So as a matter of fact, you can say that, uh, you know, I shouldn't have done this derivation. So because uh, in the end of the day, what I have actually derived is that e to the power minus i over h uh, bar h uh, Hamiltonian times t is equal to 1 minus i over h bar h t over n to the power n, where n goes to infinity. And this is actually an alternative definition of the exponential. And this is absolutely correct. This is all there is. So we are basically just writing, uh, instead of writing the complicated nonlinear function or exponential of an operator as a complicated function, we are just going to write it as a product of uh, functions which are linear in our Hamiltonian. And as we, as we do so, uh, in between each of these uh, terms in this product, I'm going to insert my favorite resolution of the identity. So this dx, x, x. And, uh, well, since I have many x's now, so I'll have to label them differently. So there is going to be x1, x2, x3, which will uh, sort of correspond to these uh, um, um, intermediate coordinates that I have in, in my trajectories. Now, if we put everything together, we get this complicated looking expression for the propagator, which is obtained by, well, sort of sandwiching this product of 
evolution operators between xi and xf and here I'm also going to be using the notation x0 is the initial one and x sub n is going to be the final one so this will allow me to write the this propagator in a more compact way and also as I mentioned so in between of each of these uh, sort of small uh, evolution operators for a small time t over n or delta t so I uh, uh, insert this resolution of the identity but I have to uh, sep distinguish different uh, instances where I have to do so and therefore have so many different integrals now uh, the reason again I'm doing this is because uh, uh, instead of dealing with this complicated exponential I now can deal with this uh, linear matrix elements uh, of the Hamiltonian which can be calculated in a rather straightforward way. So um, just to summarize what what remains to be calculated if you just look at this expression is well simply the matrix element between x sub k plus 1 and x sub k and the matrix element of the Hamiltonian. So all these guys uh, you know i, h bar, n and t are uh, numbers so they don't really act on this uh, on these functions. And the Hamiltonian itself, of course, uh, is just basically the operator corresponding to uh, the energy and it has the kinetic energy part and the potential energy part. And so apart from this matrix element, I have uh, to calculate two other matrix elements, which uh, essentially are the last pieces of the puzzle that uh, uh, requires to be uh, uh, completed in order to get this uh, Feynman path integral and so in the remaining of this uh, video I'm going to be calculated basically these guys 